wait a minute. Yeah. Uh, so we have to start problem number three. Yeah. So problem number three is asking us to compute the trend values by the method of moving average and then taking three yearly cycles from the following data. And we are supposed to plot the actual trend values on the graph paper. <clears throat> and they've given us the year and they've also given us the values. Now coming to the first part, that is your uh, year, then Y, that is the dependent variable. And then three yearly moving average, we have to find out why three yearly moving average because the problem clearly states by the value of, uh, by the method of moving average taking three yearly cycles, okay? Three yearly cycles, you're supposed to use three yearly moving average. Now, so we have to consider this variable Y and how many years are we supposed to add the values? For how many years are we supposed to add the values? Now, if I start from 76, for how many years should I add? I want everybody to answer. Please do not sleep. Be active. Three years. Everybody's clear with that? Yes? Okay. So we'll start from 76. That is here. Okay. We'll start from 76. This is Y1, Y2, Y3. So this will be my first moving average total. It is moving average total. Okay. It is... It is not the direct moving average. It's just the moving total. Let's take out this average also, moving total. So I'm writing the total in the central value that is 70. Out of 370 is the center value. So I'll write it here. And then the next one is from Y2, Y3, and Y4. I'll write the central value here or the in the center. And then... <clears throat> We have Y3, Y4, Y5, and then Y5, sorry, uh, Y4, Y5, Y6, and so on. So we got three year, three yearly moving totals here. And then when you divide each of them by three, you're going to get three yearly moving average. Now, did you all get the same numbers? Everybody got the same numbers? Please check. Anywhere if you have made the mistake. Okay, good. Now we have to plot these data, this particular data, okay, this, this data of this whole problem, we are supposed to plot them in the graph. Now, how do we plot this in the graph? Let us understand. So, they, in the problem, in the question, if we see, they have given plot the actual trend values on a graph paper. They have asked us the actual trend values. So, what we will do is we will be taking years into consideration and then we will be taking this dependent variable into consideration And then we will be taking three yearly moving average into consideration. This will be your actual data. Okay. Now, for any graph, if you remember in the previous semester also when we learned graph. So, for any graph, we have to define the scale. Correct. What is the scale is supposed to be defined. Now, let us see how to do that. Now, going on to the graph. First, you have a scale. Now, on x-axis, what do you write? On y-axis, what do you write? That we have to understand, okay? See, if you see your x-axis, I have written the years. 2001, 2002, 2003, 4, 5, and, and so on. We have written the years, okay? And when it comes to... When it comes to y-axis, we have taken the values with the difference of 5. 
Now, why we have taken the values with the difference of five? If you see the values here of y and as well of as well as the three early moving average, you have seventy six, seventy. 72 78 you you have less difference you don't have a particular difference of 10 15 or 5 20 it's not given like that there's a less difference of uh, you know few of them there are differences of 5 6 and few have differences of 3 or 4 so to get some equal value for us or where to make it much easier we have taken the value on the scale as 5 and do not start your graph with zero here okay this this point is zero for sure but from this point okay let let me just help you out here okay this point where the axis is there no this is zero this is zero but from here till 60 okay from here till 60 it is 0 to 60 is considered in this small place after that we will have five as difference i hope you all understood how uh, i have considered the graph here and why i started with 60 because if you will have to check the values of y and the trend values which you are supposed to consider if you see the values of y the least value of y is 70 least value of y is 70 and here Seventy-two is the least value, so that is why I have started from sixty because you will get a proper note, uh, you know, clear way to mark the graph here. You can take two also as the uh, difference. You can take two also as the difference, but what will happen is your graph will be too long. You start from two. Let's say you start from seventy, or we will say we'll start from sixty-eight. Sixty-eight. Seventy, seventy-two, seventy-four, seventy-six, seventy-eight, eighty, eighty-two, eighty-four, eighty-six, eighty-eight, ninety. At least till ninety, ninety-two. You have to have. You can take two as the uh, values also, and you can try. just that you will get a little long graph that is the only thing that is there okay so did you all understand the axis part everybody understood the axis can we go to the points how to note the points okay now let us start okay so for 2001 see the second column and the last column the last column what we have these are the two major columns where we have to understand this is not required this is just for calculation for graph we only need y and the last column so in 2001 the uh, dependent variable is 76 but then there is no three yearly moving average so 2001 the value of y okay see the value of y is in the light blue color and the actual trend is in the dark blue color okay so the value of y okay let us do something like this just wait a second Okay. I 
don't know if that will work completely. Okay, so we will try this out first. So if you, uh, can you see only the light blue line? Now here, we will first mark all the data which is there in Y, okay? So Y is 76. So we have marked 2001, 76, just a little above here. Okay, here you can't see all the lines, okay? All the graph lines is not seen, but in your graph sheet, you can easily note one every unit of the graph sheet, correct? So in that you're supposed to consider this 76 and then going back to 2002 is 70 2002 is 70 so 2002 exactly on 70 you will have to mark then again for 2003 is 72 a little above 70 you will have two points go for that then 2004 is 78 5 6 7 8 okay you will have to check the lines in the graph and then add it. Then 2005 is 80, 2005, 80, 80 directly you can uh, mark. And then 2006 is 74, 2007 is 78, 2008 is 82, 2009 is 84, 2010 is 90. Then again, we have 88 and 86 for 2011 and 2012. So you all know how to mark the graph, right? Anybody has problem with that? Did you all understand until here? Okay, so from for 2001, there is no trend value. We don't mark for 2002. There is a trend value 72.67. So actual, uh, sorry, the expected was 70. And what is the actual 72.67? Six, seven. Next, for 2003, we again have 72 was Y and 73.3. Now, only consider year and three yearly moving average. The first column and the last column. So, 2003, 73.33. Now, how to mark 73.3 and all that? You can mark it 73 and a little above. A, a very little above you can mark. That's again an assumption that 0.3 will be a little above. Don't go to 74. Okay, 0.3 will be just a minute difference which is there. Then coming to 2004, 76.66. 2005, 77.33. Again, 2006, 77.33. 2007 is 78. And from 2008, it has increased. Okay. From 2008, you it is gone from 78, it went up to 81.33. Now here, if you see 81 and 82, they're very, uh, there is very minute difference. Okay, now we were, um, uh, you know, marking all the trend values, right? So for 2008, 2009, see here again, where there is very little minute difference between the actuals and the uh, you know uh, the dependent value and again here we estimated more but we only ended up with 87.33 and the graph or the trend line will stop at 2011 because we are using three early moving average it started from 2002 and it ended at 2011 fine so that is your three yearly moving average graph. You just have to drag, uh, draw the graph uh, with the Y values and 
with the uh, with the three yearly moving average value understood did you all follow okay now take your time there is no hurry take your time and copy this down in your notes after the class i will be sharing this ppt part after the class okay once you have completed with the graph i want everybody to send me the picture or do do something don't send me the picture send me the scan copy of the notes until now okay until today whatever has been asked you to write you will have to send it to me before 4 o'clock 4 pm is your time and then before that you will have to send it to me i hope it is clear yes and uh, oppo a5 uh, can i know your name okay now let's go to the next question navya okay please change your name navya uh, do not have your uh, phone names because it will it will not get, fetch you the attendance that's the that's the main thing okay do 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 that as early as possible okay fine fine so the next uh, the next question is estimate the trend values using the data given below by taking three yearly moving average and show the actual as well as trend values on the graph paper now here it is similar as your previous question now will you guys give give a try to this all of you will try solving this problem same similarly like the previous one i'll just explain it once again you will have to take the year whatever is given in the question copy down the y dependent values given in the question that is variable y and then find the three yearly moving total that is y1 y2 y3 y2 y3 y4 y4 y5 y6 and so on okay do the totals divide the total by 3 you will get three yearly moving average now after finishing the table mark firstly the first step is to take the year onto the x axis take the year onto the x axis and take the y variables onto the y axis and then mark all these dependent variables first which will be the y values and then come to the trend values that is three yearly moving average and mark all of this okay now coming to the scale on x axis it will be one unit is equal to one year because if 2000 2001 2002, 2002 it is one year okay on y axis it will be the value of 2 the difference between the values will be 2 uh, you can start from the number which is very easier now here check which is the least number the least number i think it is only 11 okay 11 is the least number and here 14 is the least number okay so i have started it from 8 you can also start from 10 okay you can also start from 10 so 10 12 14 16 18 20 like that you can draw the graph even though the graphs come uh, graph is coming long make sure all your points are laid out correctly and use proper lines for your uh moving uh, sorry for your uh, dependent variable use dotted lines for the trend so will you try this problem okay so let us go to the next one
so the which means we are going to finish this uh, type of problem that is moving averages now for us this is this was just an introduction okay moving average was an introduction for your syllabus the main point what is applicable is the trend value setting the trend value using equations okay we will see that in tomorrow's class but before that let us understand what is there in merits of moving averages now we have solved the problem of moving averages but what are the advantages of it okay now the advantages of it is it's very simple and it's easy to compute so it will be very easy for people to understand what is the moving average and how it is calculated or how it is utilized so that will be the merits of moving average then cyclical fluctuations are automatically eliminated now cyclical fluctuations means now there is a business cycle now in business cycle you will have okay in business cycle you will have introduction then you will have growth then you will have maturity then it will be decline and then it goes to depression again they will recover again they will grow again they will decline again they go to depression right so there will be some fluctuations of sales that keeps happening all the time throughout the business cycle so this uh, fluctuations can can be taken out if you use moving averages method how can you take it out because we will be calculating the average of 3 we will be calculating the average of 3 years so in that scenario we will be calculating the average and not every year so fluctuations will be removed then flexible method for finding the trend values now here if you uh, observe that we it is very easy for us to find the trend value you just have to total 3 years or 4 years whatever is given to us and then we will be able to Uh, just take that things out and put that into the graph sheet the only thing you have to be careful with the graph sheet is that the scale of the graph sheet on x axis what will come on y axis what will come what is the value of that axis that you take okay so this is your merits of moving average now coming to the demerits of moving average we saw the advantages it is easy to understand simple to calculate and uh, it will help us understand things very easily it is very flexible on the graph sheet and all that okay now coming to demerits we will see there is a loss of information at both ends of time of the series longer the span larger the loss now if you happen to observe in the problem we will first leave out the first year uh, moving average data and the last year moving average data now if you see go back to the problem okay if you go back to the problem if you see here see 2000 data there is no moving total and moving average again 2012 there is no moving total and moving average similarly if you go back to four yearly moving data four yearly moving data the first two values we have not considered correct and then last two values there is no moving average to be considered so that is one of the disadvantage which means we are missing out on some of the data which were supposed to be considered okay in a five yearly moving average uh, also you will see one data taken out in four yearly moving average you will see two data taken out then there is no mix a uh, fixed mathematical formula for finding the trend values under moving averages method there is no fixed formula so we just have to uh, calculate the moving averages and then we will have to plot it on the graph sheet so to see the trend if the trend is on the upward direction then it will be called as upward trend but if the same thing it is decreasing like this then it is called the downward trend okay so the, there is no fixed formula then it will serve the little purpose in forecasting since it is not represented by a mathematical formula now for these uh, accuracy or for you know definite answers uh, mathematical formula is always the best way to give you the definite answers because it will not consider all situations it it will define few situations and it will say yes we have to consider like this only so there is very little forecasting or predicting done 
when we use moving averages so it's not very accurate or it's not you know 100% trustable all the time so this is the first method of moving average understood any doubts till here can we go to the next uh, type okay so let us understand the next type that is methods of least square very 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 important type of uh, that you are supposed to understand you will get 6 marks as well as 14 marks problem from methods of least square okay so let us understand first before getting into the problems we have to understand what is this method of least square okay it's a popular method of finding trend values based on regression technique now we have not started with uh, correlation and regression okay Re regression is a mathematical technique where uh, where you will use the equation to find the trend values okay there's a particular equation which will be given with the uh, variable and constant uh, mixture of variable and constant and we will be using that to find the trend values the procedure of finding the uh, trend value is there okay that that is inbuilt in the uh, time series but then there are various ways to find that trend values okay so under the least square method a straight line representing an average movement of the values through time is drawn which fits the trend values so we will be seeing uh, calculating the trend values as per the time because it's a time series data uh, as per the time we will be uh, adding few values to the equation and finding out the data and that will be the final trend value which should be put on to the graph now when you put that on to the graph it will give you one uh, meaning to the graph either it is upward trend or downward trend okay so that is known as method of least square then this method is termed as method of least squares because okay this is important the sum of squares of the individual deviations between the actual values and computed values will be least so what are we trying to do let's say let's take an example uh, we have budget for this month okay we have a budget for this month we are saying or instead of budget let's take our syllabus i think that will make more sense at this okay sorry please wait a second okay when when it comes to this uh, point here what we are talking about let's take an example of let's take an example of syllabus okay now for one week if i plan okay as a teacher if i plan i am supposed to finish two concepts for one week if i plan i am supposed to finish two concepts this will be the individual deviations or sorry this will be the Uh, predicted values or planned values but for one week if i am if i am able to complete only one and half concept only one and half concept i am able to do it okay so in that case that will be my actual values and the computed values okay this two concept which i planned before is called as computed value and this one and half which i actually completed is the actual value so here i will i am trying to reduce this gap between the actual and the computed you you might think you will score 70 out of 70 in an exam that is a computed value but when your results come you end up scoring only 50 that is actual value okay so in this using the formula from methods of least square we will be able to understand what is the deviation you you were very confident of getting 
but some something happened in between and you ended up only getting 50 marks you ended up getting only 50 marks so what is that that deviated you to get only or to score only 50 marks and we will also try and understand to reduce this gap so that you also from 50 will be able to score 65 plus understood are you all able to follow is everybody able to follow until here guys okay now next further the sum of deviations of the items from average is zero all this we will understand in a problem i think that will make more sense so instead of only sticking on to the theory here then in other words under this method the trend line is fitted to the time series so that so that what will happen summation of y minus yc is equal to zero this is actually zero and summation of y minus yc square is the least value okay whatever is the least value here y is the actual value and yc is the trend value or the computed value so we'll have to start with the problems as early as possible for you to get to know the technicalities now before getting into that uh, technical part or the problem part here the straight line see this is important this can be a two marks question what is line of best fit the straight line representing trend values we get when plotted on a graph sheet under the method of least square is known as line of a best fit so in a graph if you get the graph let's say like this and then this is the line of the best fit because we are getting the trend values after solving or after calculating the method of